Welcome. I'm Allison Hart. I'm the CEO of the Gresham Area Chamber of Commerce, and thank you for joining us today for our Government Affairs Forum, our monthly luncheon. And today we're pleased to have our topic around our new city councillors in Gresham and Troutdale. And we did invite the other jurisdictions to uh, participate as well, but they weren't able to accommodate the schedule. So um, as a regional chamber, it's important to us to have relationships with all of our elected officials from each of the cities. I wanted to thank our sponsors. Our presenting sponsor is Riverview Community Bank. And uh, thank uh, Casey Ryan is here. You want to raise your hand, Casey? Thank you very much. Gresham Barlow School District, and I believe that the school board representative is here, Chris Howitt. Thank you for being here, Chris. Uh, PGE is our registration sponsor. Thank you to PGE. And then Metro East Community Media does a uh, taping of this program that's um, aired later on on uh, their, their public access channel. Um, as we have changed our programming this year uh, to Persimmon, we'd just like to remind you to register in advance. It helps us to know how to set our room and what have you, as it is different from Heidi's, where you know we um, could on a dime switch things around, but here we do need advance notice. So I just encourage you, uh, those who are regular participants in our program, to, to just register in advance to let, you know that, let us know that you're going to be here. I also wanted to acknowledge Lori Stegman, who's the Gresham City Councilor. Lori is actually the, the council liaison for the Chamber of Commerce and the City of Gresham. And I wanted to just say a special thanks. She actually helped us orchestrate having all the, the newest city councilors from Gresham here. So thank you very much for, for your work and our, our many years of working together, Lori. Thank you. And I would also be remiss without um, recognizing our chamber leadership. We have several members of our board here, so if you just want to wave as I call your name, Kirk French, Bob McDonald, Matt Miller, and Casey Ryan from our board, and help lead the strategic direction of the chamber. So thank you very much. Oh, and Lynn, I'm sorry, and Lynn, Lynn Snodgrass, I apologize, Lynn. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Andre Wang, who's the chair of our Government Affairs uh, Committee and also a board member, uh, to bring us into the program. So thank you so much. Thank you, Allison. Uh, I know it's been two weeks ago, but gong hei fa choi. It is, we are now in the year of the dragon. snake. We came out of the year of the dragon. We're in the year of the snake, which means that this year is going to be quick, smooth, but unpredictable. So, uh, so here we go. So this past November's election, uh, we have a class of six new city councilors in our region and one new mayor. Their platforms range from economic development to, uh, to public safety to financial stability for their cities. In Fairview, we have two new city councilors, Councilor Tammy Arnold and Councilor Steve Prom, and unfortunately they're not able to join us today, but we have the rest. Representing Troutdale, we have Councilor John Wilson. Representing Gresham, we have Councilors Jerry Hinton, Mike McCormick, and Mario Palmero. In the Chamber's ongoing effort to, uh, to connect all of you with our local leaders, we want to take time to get to know them and uh, talk to them about what compelled them to serve and what their priorities are for their, uh, for their cities. So each councillor will give us their remarks, and then as customary, we'll open the floor for your questions. Our first speaker is Councillor Jerry Hinton. Jerry is a 10-year resident of Gresham and has been active on the city's finance committee and citizen involvement committee. He loves international travel, and he actually spent two years living at, at an elevation of 14,000 feet in a mud hut in Bolivia where he learned to speak both Spanish and the native Aymara languages. He holds his bachelor's from Brigham, Brigham Young University, his MBA from National University, and his law degree from Concord School of Law. Yes, he is a recovering lawyer. <laughs> I hope to be one of those someday, actually. <laughs> Today, Councillor Hinton is the general manager of Brasher's Portland Auto Auction, and his committee assignments include citizen involvement, Finance, and the Columbia Cascade River District. To discuss his perspective on Gresham, please welcome Councillor Jerry Hinton. Uh, thank you, Andre, and uh, thank you, uh, the Chamber of Commerce. We very much appreciate the opportunity to speak to you today and uh, just uh, get to know you a little bit better. Um, realizing that all of us have not been in the public eye, uh, uh, all these years, we've certainly worked hard to support our families and uh, be good community citizens and uh, in many ways tried to serve others, as I think all of you have tried to serve others as well. But I think all of us uh, share that uh, unique uh, desire to uh, uh, stretch out and do all we can for our fellow man and for the citizens here in, in Gresham. Um, 
very much appreciate uh, the opportunity to, to get to know you a little bit more today. Um, in honor of, of Andre and his uh, Year of the Snake, uh, I thought I'd just, I'd just throw out a, just a little story. There's this uh, fellow who's up on the, uh, up, uh, let's say the Bolivian Andes Mountains, and he comes across a cave. And in that cave, he sees this rattlesnake. And this rattlesnake, which most people would, of course, be very, very afraid of, is stiff as a board. He, it is just absolutely stiff. And uh, I didn't know that we had one minute, so we'll, uh, two minutes? Okay, anyway. <laughs> He sees a snake, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's stiff, it's hard, and uh, he decides that, uh, uh, you know, he wants to save this poor rattlesnake, even though it's, it's uh, intuitively very afraid of, of, uh, uh, of, of the snake, he, he decides to take it down the mountain, and as he's going down the mountain, uh, it starts to get warmer and warmer and warmer, and the snake finally starts to wake up, and it raises its head, looks at him, and bites him, and he looks at him like, why would you bite me, I'm trying to save your life. And the snake uh, says, well, you knew what I was when you picked me up. And like that, and in terms of uh, our relationship with, uh, with uh, the economy and what's gone on the past five years, um, you know, we've, we've all of us, um, unfortunately, in some way or another, uh, put ourselves in the position of, a, of, a, of a, a economic distress. And we kind of knew what that was when we, when we maybe speculated too much back in the 90s and, uh, and uh, the early 2000s, and uh, it came back to bite us in 2008. Now, over the last five years, we've uh, suffered a lot. The citizens of Gresham have suffered a lot, and uh, it's time that uh, the recovery uh, begins. It's exciting. I see it all around us, uh, new storefronts uh, opening up. Uh, the, uh, the Enterprise Zone is uh, thriving. And we've just uh, put in uh, Boeing and uh, on semiconductor recently in terms of uh, renewed five-year abatement. And uh, through all of those efforts and uh, through many, many others that I hope to be a part of uh, as a city councilor in Gresham, um, I see opportunities uh, uh, abound uh, in terms of what we can do to help increase uh, the citizens' uh, quality of life here in Gresham. Um, I, again, appreciate the opportunity to serve. Uh, my father was a, a counselor in his small town in Hurricane Utah back in the day, and he encouraged me and told me what a great opportunity and a rewarding uh, opportunity it would be. And I found that so far in just the two months that I've uh, been a counselor, there's a sharp learning curve. We're all learning quite a bit. It takes time, so bear with us. Uh, be patient. Um, but uh, we've got some great ideas, and having our, the fresh eyes that I think we all have uh, will allow us to maybe see things just a little bit differently, a little different perspective from some of the other uh, city councilors, even though they've done a great job. One of the fantastic things I've noticed uh, over the last couple months is just the, the staff that uh, uh, runs the city on a day-to-day -day basis. What a fantastic group of individuals. I applaud them. I respect them. I respect the uh, previous uh, uh, counselors and, and the, those that are uh, incumbent that are currently on the, on the council and the mayor. They've done a fantastic job, and uh, we, I just uh, hope and pray that I can follow in their footsteps. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Hinton. Our next speaker is Councillor John Wilson of Troutdale. Now, Councillor Wilson took the roundabout way to get to East County, originally from Fountain Valley, California, California in Orange County. He went on to Georgia, Florida, Oklahoma, and then settled in Troutdale in 1991, uh, where he's been active in East County ever since, serving on a variety of committees and civic organizations where Troutdale actually recognized him as their Citizen of the Year in 2002. Today he lives in Troutdale with his wife Paula, and they have two children, Christopher and Brianna, and they also enjoy their four-year-old granddaughter. He's in county, today he's an account executive for the Pamplin Media Group, and in case you don't think that every vote counts, Councillor John Wilson won his election by four votes. Mandate. <laughs> <laughs> Will you please welcome Troutdale Councillor John Wilson. Thank you. Uh, when I first uh, got relocated out here, I was working for uh, Minolta Corporation, uh, which is a company that's gone by the wayside in 2006. Uh, and that's probably because they didn't keep up with the technology. And it's important, I feel, that uh, the cities keep up with the changes of the time and work towards whatever finances they have to make sure that uh, they first take care of their uh, services and then work on all the extras. Uh, 
Troutdale, I didn't know when I first moved into it, uh, has 40 mile an hour sunshine. I don't know if <laughs> any of you ever been out there, but uh, there was one year we had uh, 70 mile an hour wind gusts over Christmas, I'm sure. Uh, Casey remembers that, that year. It was an amazing year. Um, I started in Troutdale. Uh, Mayor Paul Tolliver got me started uh, volunteering, uh, got me on the budget committee. Uh, I've worked on the uh, Urban Renewal Committee. Uh, I also worked on the committee to get urban renewal passed in, in uh, Troutdale. I was with Scouts for 11 years, um, helped my daughter's dance team. So all in all, I even had my own folder at the uh, Troutdale Elementary School Principal's Office. <laughs> so I, I've been active. Um, I wanted to take this to a, a new level. Uh, there's many things that we've got to address out in Troutdale before they get to uh, Portland. Problems such as our roads, we've got to address that. Uh, to make sure that we keep them repaired. Uh, we have quite a number of parks. We've got to make sure that we maintain those. And while we're expanding, to make sure that we can uh, take care of the new parks also. So that's why I ran, was to uh, make sure that uh, I had something else to do. My wife said that uh, I quit all my volunteering as I was trying to make the decision. And now she says, now I'm even more active than I used to be. Uh, but I want to make sure that. Uh, um, I champion for our Open for Business program. Uh, that's what's going to help all the cities turn around uh, economically wise. Uh, and with our urban renewal in the old sewer treatment plant area, that looks like it's about uh, to turn around. So we'll have new businesses, get that on the tax rolls. Uh, we're working on the Marino block downtown uh, to get somebody to take care of it because it's a big blight on the city. Anybody, that's the burnout building for those who don't know uh, in Troutdale. And it's been there for about 10 years, and it's about time that we, we get that fixed. Uh, anyway, I believe that uh, Troutdale is a great place to, to live, and that's why I wanted to get involved. And if anybody told me the process of getting elected was so involved, I might not have done it. Uh, uh, but winning by four votes, I, I'm just glad there was enough confidence uh, <laughs> in me that uh, I'm now sitting on the city council. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Wilson. Our next speaker is Gresham City Councillor Mario Palmero. Councillor Palmero was appointed to the Gresham City Council last, last November, filling the seat vacated by Councillor John Killian. He's actually a California native, but moved to Oregon when he was 18 and has been in Gresham for the last 10 years, where he lives in the Rockwood neighborhood. Councillor Palmero is a benefits coordinator for the Oregon Department of Human Services Self-Sufficiency Program and is an active volunteer with Rockwood Weed and Seed, Habitat for Humanity, and the AARP VITA Tax Aid Program. He holds his Associates in Political Science from Mount Hood Community College and his Bachelor's in Political Science from Portland State. He is fluent in both English, Spanish, and is learning Learn. Russian. Learn. Today, Councilor Palmero's committee assignments include natural resources, public safety, and the Gresham Sister City Association. We please welcome Councilor Mario Palmero. I'd like to thank you, Andre, for inviting me and allowing me to uh, introduce myself to fine people here. Um, I lived in uh, Gresham for about on and off 10 years. I moved around a lot. I've lived in Beaverton, uh, Tigard, Lake Oswego, and Troutdale, but I always found Gresham my home. And when I was in the market to purchase a home, um, three things came to my mind. Um, First and foremost, where can I get the most bang for my buck, um, above average schools, and a uh, thriving community? And Gresham came on top of that list. And like anyone investing money, um, I want my house to, uh, to, to uh, increase in property value. I want equity to go up. Uh, and many of my friends thought it was a big risk buying a house in, in Rockwood, Gresham on 182nd. But I think the odds are in my favor. And I know over the last four to five years, um, it's been difficult for many of the homeowners and business owners uh, to keep those doors open. I know that many of them have been struggling, uh, working hard, uh, long hours, and, um, and are wondering if the, the risk is worth the reward. I think it is. I know that I'm here to communicate with you that uh, our 
city manager, our mayor, and our council, and all the city staff are working hard to uh, bring to bear all the tools, resources, um, and assets to help business be successful. Now, I'm not a business owner, nor do I want to be. It's too much of a tough job for me. Um, but I know the, the relationship between the community, a healthy community, a healthy local business, and a healthy local government. So if you're successful, we're successful. And, and I hope that uh, in the future, we can continue our, our building our bridges between the uh, local government, community, and business. Um, there are many changes happening in Gresham Rockwood. Um, the urban development plan uh, is taking effect. Uh, I, one of the main reasons I ran is to change Gresham's, Gresham Rockwood's point of view in, in, in regards to the media and what people think of Gresham. I think that Gresham will no longer be Oregon's best kept secret. I think economic development and progress will begin here. We will be an example for the rest of the state. Uh, and I'm going to be quiet now and sit down. Thank you for having me here today. Uh, again, my name is Maria Palmero. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Palmero. Our last speaker is Councillor Gresham Councillor Mike McCormick. Councillor McCormick is a retired Portland firefighter and has lived in Gresham since 1957. Now, before joining the council, he has served as a volunteer with the Gresham Fire Corps president of the Gresham Butte Neighborhood Association, and was served on the Gresham Public Safety Committee. He's a graduate of Centennial, Centennial High School, and, an, uh, and of the Oregon Fire Academy, and served in the U.S. Army. Today, he lives in Gresham with his wife, Kathy, and they have two sons, Scott and Christian. Now, interesting thing about Councillor McCormick, he also roasts his own coffee. His committee assignments include public safety and the Council Employee uh, Performance Committee. Will you please welcome Gresham City Councilor Mike McCormick. Thank you, Andre. Uh, yeah, I've, I have uh, lived in Gresham a long time. Um, I was born in California, San Francisco, but we moved as soon as I was born. I moved to Richland, and then I lived in Seattle for a little while. And then the rest, the rest is all history. We've lived here in the East County for a long time. So uh, it's my home. And um, I only left for two years, and that was to go be in the Army. That was back during the uh, Vietnam era. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great, thriving community to live in. And uh, I'm very proud of it. And uh, I know that there's been difficult times here recently because of the economy. And uh, as I uh, said in my bio in the, uh, when I was running it, uh, my two priorities are public safety and business. And uh, I look forward to seeing uh, the business. Uh, it's already improved dramatically, and I look forward to seeing where it's going to go from here. You know, uh, I think we have a great future in front of us. And uh, uh, the public safety part of it, um, I can relate to the fire department in particular because I have been volunteering with them for quite a while, and uh, they're struggling. You know, um, they have done things, and I'm sure the police has too, and people don't see it, but they're down to bare bones. Uh, they just, uh, you know, their rigs look great because they polish them quite well, but uh, the internal parts of them wear out, and uh, they can't afford a new rig. And uh, just to give you an example, uh, they bought a reserve rig from Clackamas for $10,000. And they got two reserve rigs given to them for a year from Portland. So they are doing what they can to, with what they have. And you know, so that's pretty much the story of, of public safety. I'm sure if you delved into the police department, you would have the same thing. So I, my outlook is to see them thrive, because I think they're very important, and, uh, and then business, I want to see that thrive. I mean, um, one of the comments I used to make was that Gresham was becoming a ghost town, because you were seeing businesses close up left and right, of which, uh, oh, what's that steakhouse or restaurant that's right over there by Taco Bell? They just closed up recently. Yeah, the Sizzler, yeah, and, uh, you know, but it's, but, you know, you drive down Main Street now, and it's, it's improved dramatically in the last year or two. You know, I mean, you go like, wow, 
this is great, you know, so, so I just look forward to seeing it. You know, the, the, um, the program that the city council had was the garage to storefront, and I think that was a big uh, incentive for people to get there with uh, some tax breaks and whatever. So uh, hopefully we can revive that in the, in the future and uh, give more people the opportunity to uh, come and, and have a small business there. But even on the other side, I mean, uh, the, uh, we d uh, listened to Boeing and uh, on semiconductor and uh, like Boeing is going to invest $300 million into their business here within the next five years. And on semiconductor is going to invest four million, and I'm not sure about jobs, but I think I don't know. 400 jobs seems to come to my mind on Boeing. I'm, don't quote me on that, but uh, but it is a job producer. And uh, on semiconductor, I believe is going to uh, increase by 55. So it's definitely a, a move in the right direction. So uh, I just look forward to where we can go from here. I mean, we have. Uh, what do they call them? Um, enterprise zones, which they're a part of, and uh, you know, one of the things that that I've I've seen, uh, I'm kind of bouncing around a little bit, but uh, um, you know, some of these buildings in Gresham have been vacant for years, and the one that comes to mind right now is J.C. Penney, and it's been inhabited again. And I go, wow, thank you, Lord, you know, because uh, you know these are. Okay, I'm getting messages from the back of the room. But these are positive things, so uh, I'm very humbled to have run. I've never run for pu uh, public office, and uh, it's a gratifying uh, thing, and uh, I hope that we can uh, be real beneficial these next four years to the Gresham community. So thank you very much. Thank you, counselors. Uh, we're going to uh, open the floor. Or before we open the floor, we, uh, we have uh, just some Q&A we're going to ask, and, um, and we have a couple questions from the Government Affairs Council, then we'll turn it over to the chamber uh, audience. And the first question, we'll start with Counselor Wilson, work our way down the line, is all of you campaigned on an issue, whether it's economic development, public safety, roads, um, being on the job for two months now, what are the critical issues facing, and it's a two-part question, facing our region, but then maybe facing your city specifically? Maybe they're the same, maybe they're two different issues, but the most critical issues that you, you see facing our region and facing your city. Well, I think uh, the number one thing on everybody's mind are, are the city budgets. Um, everybody's struggling. <clears throat> everybody's trying to make things work. Everybody's cutting uh, services. Uh, recently, uh, was, I think it was Fairview who, who got rid of their chili festival the city, from the city paying for it. They're going to have to go out and uh, find private donors to get into that. Uh, I think safety is another big thing out, out this way. Um, as Max has come out this way, and it's not Max's fault, but we, we're, we're seeing a lot, of, a lot more crime, uh, younger crime, uh, out in the Troutdale area from, from the high schools, uh, and just in general, uh, it's going to be a bigger problem in the near future for uh, East County. And then our road systems are all starting to age, and we all got to start addressing that. Um, I guess it's really just a way to get everything financed with the monies we have, and, and we need to, as, as uh, counselors, uh, stick to our guns to make sure that we let the, the housing market dictate the growth and the money coming back instead of going back to the taxpayers all the time asking them for more money. Thank you. Uh, absolutely. Budgets are certainly something to be uh, concerned about. Uh, I do believe, um, and being a, a business operator for many, many years, uh, I have 150 employees in the Wood Village area, and uh, that generates about $135 million uh, a year in sales. And so I have a very firm grasp of, of business and, and what it takes. Quite frankly, at the end of the day, the city is a business. And we have to be able to 
uh, take care of our budgets through, uh, even, uh, through various sources of revenue, either uh, through a tax base or uh, uh, specifically to the, to the citizens or through property taxes and other means uh, by uh, complementing, it, complementing it through uh, increased uh, goods and services and uh, business revenue. And so I absolutely believe that uh, economic development is the, uh, the beginning and the end, quite frankly, of stimulating the city. Uh, a couple years ago, I think the city um, did a, a, a kind of a branding exercise relative to uh, acknowledging that this is a great place to live. Let's let's get let's get uh, home ownership uh, uh, stimulated out in this area. Probably not the best time of uh, of the recession to do that. A couple years ago, right in the middle. Of, of it. However, now I think is a much better time to start branding our city. We do not have to be the uh, recognized as the, uh, the, the lowest tax base, even though we are. That's something that we can utilize to help uh, spur and uh, form a catalyst to get some home ownership uh, in this area. Now, again, there are so many great reasons to live here in Gresham in this uh, eastern county area. Um, the uh, the uh, uh, the fact that we have the urban growth boundary and the density of population, you can live here and thrive here and enjoy your, your home ownership here and still live in, in uh, Beaverton or whatever. And so I think there's a, a good reason to, to really start branding and get uh, some of that home ownership excitement catalyst uh, forming in this area uh, and, and the goods and services will come with it. Uh, certainly anything that uh, we can do to help uh, generate the, the, the uh, storefront uh, uh, enterprise that uh, expired in December. So the last three years they were able to generate uh, a good number of jobs uh, and that was exciting but we need to, to, to now create some new uh, incentives for that. Um, so uh, at the end of the day again uh, we're a business. Uh, we need to be able to uh, reconcile our, 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 our statements at the, end of, at the end of the month, at the end of the year, and by doing that, uh, we need to get uh, businesses thriving, and that's where you folks come in. We appreciate you. The, the city has done a great job up to this point in, in, in being stewards with the citizens' money, um, and we need to continue to do that, uh, but it will take businesses like yours uh, to help generate uh, the, 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 uh, the excitement that I know that we all feel that Gresham can be. Thanks. Well, I ran on uh, getting the community uh, more involved with City Hall. That includes businesses, and one of the reasons I'm here today is to get uh, leaders in the business community more involved in, in City Hall. Uh, one of the issues I've seen has been our budget. Um, we are lacking in, in resources and money. Um, another issue I've seen has been public safety, um, high unemployment rate, and um, uh, our high school graduate graduate rate. So those are things that are concerning to me. Um, those are the issues I've, I've come to realize in Gresham that, you know, that resources are dwindling. We need to do something about our budget. I don't agree in raising taxes um, for businesses or for um, households. Um, so yeah, those are, I'm hoping that we can, well, I know we will th turn things around um, with the uh, urban development in Rockwood. Um, I'm hoping that that will be the catalyst to uh, economic development here in Gresham. All right. Well, one thing that uh, I like about uh, the city council and everything that's gone on is we're all pretty much on the same page. We're all business oriented and uh, we just look to see this city thrive and uh, you know, it's all about the economy and uh, how we can maximize what money there is in the budget and best utilize it. And uh, that's what we're going to strive for. So uh, without repeating what everybody else has said, I mean, I'm in total agreement with them. So uh, we just, I think Gresham has nowhere to go but up. You know, they have, they have been to the bottom and they're on their way up, you know, so. Um, as I said before, it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see where we go from here. So, thank you very much. So, for this next question, we'll start with Councillor Palmero, and then work our way down to Councillor Wilson. And this one's kind of a fun question, and give us some inside baseball on you've been a councillor now for about two months. 
what, what is it about serving on the city council that maybe some of us civilians may not know about, that you have just learned on the job here in the last two months? Um, well, you don't get paid. Uh, <laughs> you spend a lot of hours uh, either at City Hall or at attending meetings or at home reading your emails. Um, there's a lot of reading. Um, they have cool snacks. Uh, you know, I think one thing that I learned that I think a lot of people don't know is all the people who make uh, cities like Troutdale and Gresham work. <laughs> Those hardworking, dedicated people, you don't see them, they're behind the curtain, but they're out there and they're working. Our city manager, um, we have a couple people here today, I won't call them out because I don't want to embarrass them, there's Eric, you know, there's, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what I learned. That's what I learned. Um, no, and, and it's, it's been fun, and it's, uh, it's definitely an honor. Yeah, thank you. Yes, to uh, reiterate what he was saying also, but uh, I've been uh, a public servant, you know, fire department, all that stuff for all my life, and uh, I've never been up front, so I go from low-key to being up front, you know, your, uh, people call you, and uh, you try not, you're very selective about what you say, because it'll get in the paper, <laughs> <laughs> and I go... You know, in fact, uh, they were calling me about the PAL Club. I, th I don't know if you guys know about the PAL Club or not. It was supposed to close this Friday, and the Boys and Girls uh, Club jumped up and, uh, and has taken it over, which is uh, a great benefit to uh, Rockwood. It's done a lot of good. But, uh, yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it's more involved, I mean, I'm not complaining, but it's more involved than you think it is. You know, I mean, you have a lot of meetings to go to. You spend a lot of time at City Hall, but I'm not complaining at all because it's very humbling and to, to fulfill this position. You know, so. And uh, like we've only been there two months so far, but uh, we've got a lot of work in front of us. So thank you. Uh, I guess metaphorically, uh, we've, we've all been trying to find the, the hidden skeletons in the closets of, of, the, of the past and, and the staff. But, you know, this, the, it keeps coming back to Gresham having one of the best staff uh, in, in all of government that I've been able to participate in. They are just great individuals. I think there's almost 600 uh, employees uh, in, in the city of Gresham, and Eric uh, Kavarston, what a fantastic city manager he is, mm -hmm. and the culture that he uh, that comes with him uh, that really uh, emanates with all of his employees and the way that they uh, deal with not only the, the counselors but uh, the citizens in, in, as well. Um, I have had the opportunity, thankfully, to be able to serve on some committees uh, in the, uh, in the uh, uh, Citizens Involvement Committee and the Finance Committee and, and also in the city of Wood Village in the transportation and urban growth appointed by the, by the mayors there. So uh, I've had the opportunity to work with, with a couple different uh, uh, committees over the last six or seven years and it's allowed me to see from the citizens level um, just how um, hardworking and uh, wonderful our, our city is in terms of the infrastructure and the, the day to day activity and uh, uh, I think, uh, you know, I think that's about it. I, I, I wouldn't say that uh, um, there's been any overwhelming uh, discovery, uh, but it has been a, a learning curve, and, and uh, the learning curve, unfortunately, is not going to be uh, slowed down throughout this whole entire year. So be patient with us. We appreciate the opportunity to serve. Well, I think one of the first things I noticed uh, going into the city of Troutdale is that uh, Damascus is now the more controversial <laughs> city. <laughs> you know, I, I did ask all the city councilors to make sure that they cleaned everything up before I got there, but they, they didn't. Um, I found that there's a, a lot of things that uh, I thought I knew, but I really don't, uh, as far as, you know, uh, what the city's projects are, capital projects, you know, where the money's coming from. You know how they decide the build out, uh, 
the different businesses that are, are coming in trying to, to fit into the city. Um, and I think the, uh, all the city councilors basically work towards the same goal, but we all have the kind of different ideas that, that uh, we have of getting there and that we all respect each other uh, to get to the, to the end that's the best for the city. And the city workers, I found out, are really diligent. They, they really work hard. Um, and they make great presentations. They're, they're all believable, and you don't want to pass them all, but you, you can't. Uh, but the city of Troutdale is, is coming a long ways, and I think that uh, you're going to see a lot of good things out of the city council this year. Thank you. All right, we open the floor to your questions. Mr. Patrick. Thank you, Andre. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you to Persimmon for the uh, excellent uh, venue and the, uh, the food today. Uh, we all tend to have a tendency to uh, have an opinion on that. I think they did a great job. So did you get that on camera? There you go. You guys did a good job. <laughs> anyway, and then I want to thank you guys for your commitment to uh, volunteer uh, time because uh, people don't realize the, the commitment that you, you've made to do this. And um, two things. I relate to you. Uh, I also had a folder at the principal's office. Unfortunately, it was when I was a student. Uh, so I spent most of my time there learning. But uh, anyway, um, you know, economic development is an easy word. It's kind of a catch-all. Um, you know, we talk about um, the uh, urban renewal. But what are your thoughts about what can you do for existing businesses? The businesses that have been here supporting the city. Uh, you know, a majority of the people that live in the city of Gresham, and I think Troutdale also, don't work here. They commute out. And the majority of the people that work here, which is even a greater uh, concern, don't um, live in the city. Uh, you know, a lot, of, a lot of the people that work, the staffs that you talk about, don't even live in the city. Uh, you know, I know that's a challenge. You talk about the real estate, but we all focus on these new and great, sexy new things. But the businesses that have been here through the thick and the thin to help support you, you know, I hear you say, I know this is long-winded. It's kind of going to turn into commentary. I apologize for that. But you hear, you know, you support economic development, but you don't want to raise taxes. Okay, revenues are short. Where's the money going to come from? You come to the existing businesses, and the fees and the structures all start piling back up. So... Uh, uh, your thoughts on that and how to help the existing businesses here be able to thrive and grow and how we can get more people that live here to work here. Thank you. Councilor Wilson. Well, you're right. Economic development is an easy word to throw out there, and, and we all use it. You know, I think in the case of Troutdale, uh, we try to minimize the taxes, the the current business people pay because we understand that a lot of them are just getting by, making rent, making their employees, they're not taking checks home themselves. Um, so I, I, I resist any new taxes coming in, into the businesses. As far as uh, growth, uh, I know that uh, a lot of the uh, landowners are, are trying to build new houses to our downtown area to promote growth to Troutdale's downtown. Uh, so that they'll work and play and live in the same area. And those people who don't live in Troutdale and have businesses in Troutdale, I encourage you to sell your home in Gresham and come out to Troutdale. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, another way that we can afford uh, as cities to work together is, is try to find things that are in common that we could maybe work together on that would lower our costs. And, and that would help our budgets, it would help not to have to look at taxes as a, a, a new avenue of, of getting things done. So in our case, I mean, we got urban renewal that we're, we're really pushing with with a, a couple of people. We're, we're pushing to get the Marino block done so that we can attract more businesses. Uh, we have our own enterprise zone that we're currently working with a company that's, that's trying to bring new energy uh, uh, from Troutdale. So I think that we are working towards those things. I hope this answers your question. Uh, that I would rather, I'd rather see business expand than to have to tax more on the businesses. Uh, we, we actually recently, uh, well, it was before. No, I was there at that time. I had to remember there's so many things that have happened. Uh, we got rid of uh, the, the uh, game tax on all the pinball machines and all the, the games that are in, in bars, there was a tax on them and, and we, we waived it because it was kind of like a punishment tax to those businesses that 
had those. And, and probably at one time, it probably was uh, worthwhile having it because people gambled on them. I don't think they do so much anymore. So I think that's a positive thing that we've done for businesses is trying to lower, lower the taxes they pay the city. Thank you. Uh, this is probably inappropriate to uh, mention here in terms of the annexation of Troutdale. To <laughs> provide. So maybe we'll talk after, after, after the meeting. But, uh, yeah, nobody wants to tax their citizens. Uh, and quite frankly, I am very much against taxing our businesses because they are the lifeblood, the stimulus uh, that, uh, that uh, keeps the heart beating in this area. Uh, in addition to what I had mentioned earlier about uh, really trying to create a new branding for, uh, for Gresham uh, to enable it to, to uh, fill its, its residences, which brings goods and services and businesses and, and again, catapults us to another level, um, I think we need to be more creative in bringing new businesses out here. Uh, by bringing new businesses, it brings more people, and everybody in terms of your businesses uh, thrive as well. I remember reading the other day uh, an article in the paper about uh, the uh, mayor of Detroit. Uh, no, mayor of uh, uh, mayor of Detroit's probably in prison, but uh, the mayor of uh, mayor of Dallas, and he was very, very uh, proactive. And instead of just uh, bemoaning the fact that nobody was uh, bringing in businesses into his town, he actually sent out uh, the new uh, iPhone. This is several years ago, with a uh, with a, uh, uh, a PowerPoint on that iPhone, and so the businesses that he carefully selected and sent these iPhones out to uh, had, uh, he, because of the very nature of the, of the item, it, it guaranteed that it would be opened, it would be reviewed, it would be identified in terms of the business opportunities that uh, that uh, mayor was asking them to consider for his city. And certainly uh, not every one of those uh, uh, panned out, but it just showed the level of thinking outside of the box and creativity that that mayor of Dallas and because of that, he had many of these actually uh, pan out. It was a very uh, different idea. I'm not suggesting that necessarily would do that, but uh, that kind of thinking out of the box. Uh, I have to do that in my business all the time by trying to get manufacturers and captive finance companies, uh, commercial fleet companies from all over the country to decide to bring their cars to me, their secondary market cars to me. So I'm very familiar with that that whole idea uh, of having to uh, 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 nationalize your pitch and to, uh, to, to leave no rock uncovered in terms of trying to get that business out here. Certainly, we need to be more creative. We need to take care of the businesses that have been here, like you said, that have been uh, surviving and thriving, uh, and some not thriving, uh, throughout this last five years, which has been very, very difficult for most. And, and this, uh, uh, I'd like to make that a, a focus of our council work plan. Uh, again, we're very new. Um, so we haven't had a lot of opportunities to get in the middle of that, but uh, the, the garage to storefront was one that expired. We need to uh, redefine that over the next couple of years and create something very similar to that. And again, uh, reaching out to the to the individuals, to the businesses that have been here for such a long time that have that have been suffering that that, that need some help. Uh, we certainly would like to be creative and, and uh, think outside of the box to help you folks. And that's where we depend on you to give us some feedback on what you need, and we'll uh, we'll certainly address that. Thanks. Yes, as you said, uh, new businesses are the, the lifeblood of Gresham, you know, and uh, I cringe every time I drive down the street and see another one close up. And so uh, raising taxes on businesses in this city is, is probably really low on the uh, scale. You know, I, I would be very much against it. And so uh, my intake is to bring in more businesses and, uh, you know, like, like uh, he was saying, the garage to storefront was a great incentive. And hopefully we can revive that and uh, entice more people because um, it's all about the economy. It's all about jobs. And it's all about you guys as business owners that, uh, you know, without you, we, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't exist. You know, so we appreciate who you are and what you do. Thank you. I understand that uh, businesses have been taking it on the chin for the last four or five years. I know that the $7.50 water increase came at the most worst time, uh, and I understand that. 
I also understand and I'm well aware that many of our uh, citizens in Gresham do commute outside of Gresham for work. Um, many citizens in Gresham are unemployed. And that many of the staff that do work in uh, City Hall do not live in Gresham. However, um, I think as a community, we need to do better in educating our kids, giving them, them skill, the skills they need to be department heads, to be leaders in their community. We need to get uh, businesses involved in uh, teaching our kids. Uh, no longer do we have machine shops, wood shops in high school, and these are valuable skills uh, that, that young people need. Uh, now, we need to get creative in supporting the business, businesses uh, that have been here, that have been struggling, that have been asking either family or friends to work for free just to keep the doors open. And I think we owe it to them. Um, I don't think raising taxes is the, is the and I know any, no one here does, but we do need to find creative ways to get money from different pots. Everybody has money in different pots to support businesses. So, yes, I do agree with you, and I do understand. And eco economic development, that word, it's easy to use, but... Um, yeah, I'm hoping that in my role, I can help you be more successful. Thank you. Okay, Casey Ryan, Riverview Community Bank. You know, there's been so many successes since 2008, and I never hear it. And I've sat here and listened to city councils and people talk. So let me just give you a few. How many new bank branches are in Gresham since 2008? Does anyone even know? And every one of those bank branches that came to this community either took a building that went away, Key Bank at Newport, Riverview at Izzy's, total, that thing was graffitied. Key Bank took another few different spots. Wells Fargo took a corner and put someone there, and you never hear anyone talk about it. And guess what? Every one of those operations paid every single permit and fee the city has. There was no garage to the storefront for them. But the, I never hear anybody ever say that. It's like doom and gloom all the time. Okay, Gresham Ford, moved across the street, worked with Tim, okay, to create jobs there. They got more people working there, and they've done this great remodeling of this area, and another new business moved where they did and did a lot of great things. There's all these great success stories, and I keep hearing about how the economy, no, it's not that bad. It is somewhat survival of the fittest. The companies that have done good the last few years are still doing and they're thriving. Not all businesses are going to make it. There's a lot of good stuff going on in Gresham. I just want someone to recognize the business. The Riverview branch that we did there, that was a $3.5 million investment in this community. And the next time somebody from the city says thank you will be the first. It's unbelievable to me. That's a beautiful building that tore down a horrible building. And other than the Sizzlers that's on that thing, there's some good stuff going there. Goodwill built a new building there. I think Ron Tonkin maybe will eventually be doing something with their building. Arby's remodeled. So let's talk about some successes, okay? And there's been some good downtown stuff going on in Gresham, but Gresham's a large community. It's not all about downtown Gresham. So there's a lot of good things. I just want to make a comment because let's recognize the, the, the banks and the businesses that have reinvested here. Best didn't have to move her business across the street. She chose to. Huge risk on her part. Riverview Community Bank did not have to come here wasn't the best timing either for us, but we did it because we believe in this community. And banks don't come to community. They're kind of like a bellwether. Banks are looking ahead. They're not going to come here unless we believe the business community is going to get better. So you can look at all the banks that are moving here because they see something that maybe we don't even see. So I just want to, you know, let's start focusing on some of those. So thank you. Can I comment? Uh, uh, yeah, comment on the comment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let me just put a footnote to, on that. As a business uh, operator for the last five years, three of those five years have been record-breaking years for us. So I appreciate that. It's unfortunately that we operate by management by exception sometimes, and we seem to focus on the, the negative. But that kind of goes towards what I was talking about in terms of rebranding Gresham as being a successful, great place to live. And thank you for bringing up those examples. I think we need to utilize those, absolutely. And uh, let me be the first to thank you. Uh, it's, it is wonderful. And we should uh, acknowledge them and recognize them and identify who they are and use that in our, in our future branding pitch for Gresham. Thanks. Scott Hanson, local dentist. I guess we all should be bankers, Casey. Um, <laughs> we'll talk about TARP or anything. We didn't take it. <laughs> <laughs> Not only did we invest $3.5 million in there, we didn't do it with any 
government money. Amen. <laughs> you have a new administration in, in Troutdale, and what are the cities doing now? I know you're all new on the city councils, but what, how do you see and what do you see your role as East County cities and city councils working together to make sure that we're represented fairly and appropriately in Multnomah County? Uh, you know, this is one of those kind of questions that uh, will be better answered in about a year from us, but uh, I, I think it's certainly something that we should put on the radar in terms of uh, redundancy. Uh, somebody mentioned it earlier, if there's any redundancy, and, I, and I'm sure that the cities, I'm not saying anything that they haven't thought of already, but uh, certainly we should always evaluate redundancies in terms of uh, labor, uh, which is the highest expense in, in any business in any city. Um, and uh, uh, come together to, 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 to do what we can to, to eliminate um, squabbles at uh, 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 borders, uh, areas where possibly um, uh, one city may be uh, uh, guilty of trying to poach uh, businesses to come under their, to their area for the tax benefits. Um, so again, I, I wish I could probably be more articulate regarding that, but uh, give, me, give me about a year or give all of us probably a few more months on that one, but uh, we'll certainly incorporate it or, or think about that and, and uh, talk about that and acknowledge that in our, in our work plans. Thanks, Scott. Well, hopefully uh, Chris Gorsick being from Troutdale will help uh, pull some businesses out, out towards us or, or recognize us to get us more funding for different projects that we have going on. But I know that, uh, like our mayor, Mayor uh, Doust, and uh, a lot of the other city councilors, me being new, I'm not on any of the committees. I wouldn't want to be at this point because I want to learn more about what I'm doing in the city, are, are represented at, at many of the uh, county and uh, county uh, areas, city areas. So I think our, our voice for Troutdale, and I'm sure for Gresham, you have people that meet in the Umatuck and the other, the other uh, county things that are going on. So I think as long as we're out there uh, united, that we'll get more accomplished. As was just said, uh, we as the four East County cities have to be united, you know. We have to uh, work together. We all affect each other. You know, it doesn't matter who the big dog is or who the lesser whatever. I mean, uh, we went to a Four Cities thing here recently, and uh, and uh, one of the mayors let the speaker kind of have it. And it was kind of, I go, wow, okay, but enough said about that. But uh, um, we're, we're all interrelated, you know, and we haven't been in, in council long enough to... Uh, really be concrete on things yet. So as was said, a year down the road, I think it'll be a much more concrete uh, platform, you know? So, and um, we're all on the same page. We're all striving for the same thing. So, um, I, as I've said before, I just really think that Gresham is, is improving dramatically including Troutdale <laughs> and Fairview and Wood Village. You know, they're, they're all very important in East County. Thank you. Well, um, I, too, attended the uh, Four Cities meeting and uh, realized that, you know, we are very interconnected. We are very dependent upon each other. Um, I also realized in city council, being new, that I am going to rely heavily on senior or more seasoned city council members like Lori, Councilwoman Lori Stegman and Josh Fuhrer and, um, and the mayor. Uh, but I know that um, even though we are different cities, we all have one thing in common, uh, and that's to be successful, that's to you know, create a, a healthy and vibrant community. So, yeah, maybe in the future I would be able to answer that question a little bit better. Scott. Thanks. Time for one last question. All right, well, let's give our counselors a hand. Thank you for being here today.
And as we wrap up, I just want to remind you, please take uh, about uh, 20 seconds to fill out the eval forms. That gives us uh, some feedback on uh, what we can do to uh, uh, what issues we can present and what, uh, what speakers you would like to hear about. <clears throat> also, you are free to take uh, these complimentary Riverview Community Bank mugs, uh, compliments of our new motivational speaker, Ryan, <laughs> Casey Ryan. So thank you, Casey, for the mugs. Our business card drawing for lunch on us at our next government affairs meeting. Councillor Wilson, will you do the honors to draw the card? Our winner for lunch on us next government affairs meeting is Gresham City Councillor Jerry Hinton. So, <laughs> congratulations. So uh, thank you very much for joining us today. Now, uh, for next month, we do have uh, an interesting, uh, for the next couple of months, we have an interesting lineup. Next month, we are going to discuss the upcoming Gresham Barlow school bond measure uh, with Superintendent Jim Schlachter. And so that's, uh, that's something that's been uh, discussed in our community these last couple of weeks, but we are going to discuss that here uh, for our government affairs uh, forum uh, for March. Then in April, we are going to feature the Metro Parks levy uh, with uh, Shirley uh, Council. Metro Councilor Shirley Craddock and Metro President Tom Hughes. Uh, we are also looking to uh, balance that as a, a point counterpoint program, uh, and so we are uh, waiting to hear uh, back from some uh, from some uh, possible presenters to present that as a uh, point counterpoint. And then in May, we're going we're to present uh, what healthcare means to you and your business. We will have uh, Tim Rash, who's with the Oregon Health Underwriters Association, break this down. Um, specifically what federal and what state health care reforms actually uh, mean to us as businesses and, uh, and individuals. So uh, uh, fill out the eval forms. Are there any other announcements for the good of the order? All right, thank you very much for coming. Thank you, counselors, for being here. We'll see you next month. <laughs>